Hello, my name is Miss Stair, and I am the elementary music teacher at Concord International School. I miss my Concord Puma so, so much, but I'm very happy that I can be with you today to make some music. So, at Concord, we do a lot of singing, we do dancing, play instruments, but some of those things are hard to do when we are a screen apart from each other. So today we are going to do some singing, we are going to play some games, and we are going to read one of my students' favorite books from Concord. Well, let's get started with a greeting song. Now, I have to tell you, at home right now, it's kind of tempting just to eat snacks and hang out with my cat. But I've been doing my very best to keep learning anyway. So I taught myself this song yesterday um, by a wonderful musician named Ella Jenkins. So I might make some mistakes as we're playing it, um, but if you could do your best to be patient with me, I sure would appreciate that. So this is the Hello Song by Ella Jenkins. I want you to listen to my song a little bit first before you join me in singing. Here it goes. Those words are, hello, 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 and how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine, and I hope that you are too. Got it memorized already? Perfect. <laughs> Let's give it a try. And you know, do your best. If you don't have the whole song yet, just join in when you feel comfortable. Here we go. Try singing with me. Let's try doing la this time. So instead of singing any of the words, we're just going to do la. La 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 One more time. this time as loud as you can if you've got those words. Done. All right, so for this next activity, we are going to use our hands to wake up our bodies a little bit. So I want you to go ahead and take your feet and I want you to put them straight out in front of you. Now for me, I'm sitting on a couch, so it might be a little bit easier for me to put my feet down here, but you know they're there. So I'm going to take my hands and I'm going to start at my toes and go all the way up to the top of my head and back down again. But the very first time I'm going to squeeze my way to the top. The second time I'm going to tap my way to the top. 
The third time, I'm going to do tiny little slaps. So I'll slap my way to the top. And the fourth time, I'm going to do some nice gentle brushes all the way to the top. Now, if you know the rhyme hickory dickory dock, I want you to go ahead and speak it along with me. Let's give it a try. Here we go. Hick and squeeze is the first time. Here we go. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse squeezed up the clock. The clock struck one, the mouse was done. Hickory dickory dock. This time little taps. Here we go. And hickory dickory dock. The mouse tapped up the clock. The clock struck two and down he flew. Hickory dickory dock. Little slaps this time. Here we go. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse slapped up the clock. The clock struck three, the mouse went wee. Hickory dickory dock. Fourth time, some nice gentle brushes. Imagine you're covering your whole body in your favorite color paint. Here we go. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse brushed up the clock. The clock struck four and the mouse went out the door. Hickory dickory dock. Good job, now we've warmed up our bodies. I want you to take your hands and put them on your knees. We're gonna do a little rhyme called bubblegum, bubblegum. Let's give it a try. Bubblegum, bubblegum in a dish. How many breaths do you wish? Now at this point with my students, I'll have them choose a number between one and five. But today I'm the only one here, so I'll choose today. And I choose the number four. The second thing that we get to choose after we've chosen four is the language that we're going to do it in. So we normally have the choice of English, Spanish, or a mystery language of the day that sometimes the students lead. Today, I'll go ahead and start out with English. So we're going to do four in English. I want you to take some nice deep breaths with me as we count to four in English. Here we go. One. Two. Three. And four. All right, let's try bubble gum one more time. Bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish. How many breaths do you wish? Oh, I guess it's me again. Hmm. I get to choose one, two, three, four, or five. I choose five. I choose five this time. Now I get to choose English, Spanish, or my mystery language. And for the second one, let's do Spanish today. Now I want you to take deep breaths with me as we count to five in Spanish. Uno. Dos. Tres. Cuatro. Cinco. Thanks for doing those deep breaths. It's important to take a breath sometimes. All right, so our next activity is a game. I am so excited about this one. It is called Pala, Palita, Palote, Palitroque. You may have noticed that my song today is going to be in Spanish. So if you happen to speak Spanish at school or at home, wonderful, this is going to be a very fun game. If you don't speak Spanish at home or at school, that's also wonderful. We didn't speak Spanish at my home growing up, but I've always loved the opportunity to try out other languages. So we'll have a lot of fun today, and I think you'll be able to do the words very well. So I want you to listen to this song. I'm going to sing it two times for you before we start. It goes like this. Pa la palita, palote, palitroque. Pa la palita, palote, palitroque. Now this time I want you to pay extra special attention to my 
claps, my palmas. I want you to see if you can count how many times I clap after I sing the song. Here it goes. Palo, palita, palote, palitroque. Palo, palita, palote, palitroque. So if you guessed four claps, you are correct. Ding, 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 ding. Congratulations. All right, we are going to give it a try again, and this time I want you to clap along with me. Here we go. One, two, here we go. Palo, palita, palote, palitroque. Palo, palita, palote, palitroque. Nice. That's how our song goes, but we want to learn the words too. So let's go ahead and give it a try. I'll say each word nice and slowly, and then I'm going to tap my hand along to the rhythm of the words. Let's give it a try. Pala. Mm. Palita. Palote. Palitroque. I want you to see if you can echo the words this time and tap along to the rhythm. Let's give it a try. Pala. Pala. Palita. Palita. Palote. Palote. Palitroque. Palitroque. Nicely done. All right, for each of the words, I want you to see if you can count how many syllables there are. So the first one is pala. How many syllables would that be? Two, that's right, pala. Good, let's see if we can try it a little bit more on our own for the next ones. Pala, two. Palita, three. Palote, three. Palitroque, four. All right, I think that we have the words a little bit better this time. So let's go ahead and together, doing our very, very best that we can, let's go ahead and sing the song together, counting afterwards. Here we go. One, two, here we go. Pala, palita, palote, palitroque. Pala, palita, palote, palitroque. Very nicely done, and you know what? This song takes a long time for us to learn. So if you want to rewind and watch that part again, you can do that. But I also want to share with you something. My Lola, my grandmother, every single time that she hear me, hears me speak Tagalog, which is the language that my family speaks, um, my Tagalog is not as good as I'd want it to be. But every time that she hears me trying, she says, I love that you're trying, Jessica. I love that you're trying and that you're doing your best. And I don't get it perfect every time. I do not get it perfect. But she always encourages me to try anyway and do the best that I have. So I want you to try and do the same thing. So even if you don't feel like you have every single world word perfectly, that's OK. Let's give it a try together one last time before we add the game in. Here we go. Trying your best. Pala, palita, palote, palitroque. Here we go. One, two, here we go. Pala, palita, palote, palitroque. Pala, palita, palote, palitroque. Now here's where the game comes in. I brought two pieces of wood that I found um, in the art teacher's classroom, actually. She let me borrow these. So I have one piece of wood that looks like this. It is a long thin piece of wood. So I'm going to take this piece of wood and I'm going to go ahead and put it on the table in front of me. Now I have a second piece of wood. It's also thin if you look at it this way, but it's a little bit wider this direction. So I've got a wide thin piece of wood and I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on top of the other one. Now, when I put it together, it kind of looks like this. It makes it into kind of like a seesaw, kind of like a teeter-totter, if you imagine two people sitting on either side. And when I put it down on the table, you can see it can go one way or it can go the other way. 
Now, I know that you might not have wood like this somewhere in your house. So I looked around my house to try and see what I could find. And I found a box of crackers. I just had these for a snack the other night. So I had a nice thin box. And if you look at it, it's kind of similar. It's not as long as this one, but it's thin and it's long like my piece of wood. So this one can kind of work for that. So I found this for my thin, long piece of wood. And I found a paper plate. Now my paper plate is a circle instead of a rectangle, but it's flat and it's wide. So it can kind of fit on top of my cracker box, similarly to how my piece of wood does. So if I wanted to switch it, the seesaw on either side, I could go like this. It kind of falls off a little bit. But I can also go like this. And the seesaw works. I don't know if I'd like to sit on that seesaw, but it definitely works for our game. Now the other thing I found in my closet was an old pair of warm winter socks. Now I wear these when it's really, really cold outside because they're nice and thick. So I made it into a long, thin shape, kind of like my first piece of wood. And I just put it down like that. And then I found a cookbook. Now this cookbook is kind of thin and wide. So it's what worked for me. So I'll take my thin, wide cookbook and I'll set it on top. And you can see how it can be a teeter-totter as well. So go ahead and look around your house. Look around your room maybe and make sure that you ask permission before you use anything. But see if you can find a way to make a little seesaw like mine. What I'm gonna do next with it is where the fun comes in. So I'm gonna take a bunch of different coins for our song, Pala, Palita, Palote, Palitroque. And I'm gonna put these coins on top of my teeter-totter. So I'm gonna put them all on one side like this. And I just found some coins around the house, some change that was in some pockets. Then I just put it right here. So I have my coins on this side and I have an empty side right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and try singing this song. And I'm gonna do something special at the end. Here we go. Pala palita palote palitroque. Can you guess what's gonna happen next? Let's give it a try together. Here we go. Pala palita palote palitroque. And my coins go flying. Some of them fell off the table. So here's what I do now, is I'm gonna find all of my coins and I'm going to see if I can leave them exactly as they are with the heads or the tails up. Now some of my coins are from the United States, some of them are not, but most coins, almost anywhere you go, will have a head or a tail side. So I want you to sort them into two categories, the ones that landed heads up, or the ones, I think I'm missing one more, oh, there it is, the ones that landed tails up. So I can see now, two more right here, one, two. This is my head side, this is my tail side. This time I count one, two, three, four, five heads, and I have one, two, three tails. I wonder how many we'll get the next time. I bet it won't be exactly the same. So I counted the heads and the tails, and now I'm going to put them back, and we'll sing our song again. Here we go. Pala palita palote palitroque. Now what you can do at home is you can give this a try again, making sure that you don't lose too many coins underneath the fridge or anything like that. But go ahead and sort through them and see if you normally get more tails or more heads or if it's about equal. This time I think I lost about two, but I have one, two, three, four tails right here and one head. So this time I got more tails than head. Give it a try at home. Have some fun. All right, this last activity that we have today is one of my students' favorite read-alouds. It's called El Pájaro Pintado, the Painted Bird. 
And it has a song that we wrote together that goes along with it. So I'll sing it for you a few times and then I'll teach it to you so you can sing it with us. Here we go. just to this first part. said the same word three times. Vuela, vuela, vuela. Let's try it together. Vuela, vuela, vuela. What you're saying right there is just fly, fly, fly. So we have a painted bird that's going to fly, fly, fly. See if you can sing it with me this time. Just the very first part. We'll leave out the second part of the song. Here's our introduction. I want us still to sing vuela, vuela, vuela. But I'm just going to add in the second part on ooh. I won't sing the words yet, I'll just sing ooh. But we'll sing vuela, vuela, vuela together. Here we go. Here we go. One more time just to lock it in. Here we go. Vamanos. You've got it. All right, that second part I'm just singing Vuela el pájaro pintado. Or you might know that that means the painted bird flies. So you can still sing vuela, 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 and I'll sing vuela el pájaro pintado, or you can join me on the second part, your choice. Let's give it a try. Here we go. try to give you a clue this time. If I'm pointing to you like this, that's your turn when we're singing Vuela, Vuela, Vuela together, and I'll go back like this for the second part. Just so you know when you're supposed to sing. Last time. we've got the song down now and the song is going to be an important part of our book. I kind of gave part of the story away but I think that's okay because in our book El Pájaro Pintado we know that there is going to be a painted bird. Now paintings can't fly at least not that I've seen before. I've never seen a bird come out of a painting and start to fly around the room but in our book today, Don Paolo might have an extra special painting. So we're going to read our book today, The Painted Bird, by Jose Guantanabe, with our illustrations by Isa Guantanabe. Now, this book is written in Spanish, so I'll go ahead and read each page speaking in Spanish first, reading the book, and then I'll go ahead and translate it into English too, so we can all enjoy it together. Let's learn about our painted bird. Oh, I almost forgot the most important part. If you see 
in the pictures, which are beautiful. A painted bird flying. Then we're going to sing the song. So keep an eye out and scan the pictures and see if you can find the painted bird of many, many colors flying on that page. If so, we get to sing our song. Let's get started. El pájaro pintado, the painted bird. Ooh, already so many wonderful paintings. El pájaro pintado by Jose Guantanabe. Ilustraciones de Isa Guantanabe. The painted bird by Jose Guantanabe. Illustrations by Isa Guantanabe. Don Paulo vive en una casa en el campo. Don Paulo lived in a house out in the country. La casa está rodeada de árboles llenos de pájaros. The house is surrounded by trees filled with birds. You can see all the birds up there in the trees. Los pájaros no vienen a posarse en esta rama, piensa Don Paulo. A ellos les gusta el sol. The birds don't come to perch on this branch, thought Don Paulo. They must like the sun. There he is, looking up at the branch. Don Paulo decide entonces pintar un pájaro de varios colores. Don Paulo decided then to paint a bird of many colors. There's the bird that Don Paulo painted. ¿Cuáles son los colores que pueden ver? What are the colors that you can see? Verde, green, morado, purple, anaranjado, orange, azul, blue, y un poquito de rojo, and a little bit of red, I think. There's our painted bird. But wait, is he flying? No, not yet. Okay, we're still safe. No singing yet. Después de pintar un pájaro, lo mejor es almorzar. After painting a bird, the best thing you can do is eat lunch. So we can see Don Paolo in his window eating some food. Un pájaro pintado cerca de una ventana siempre se va. A painted bird nearby a window always must go. Where is the painted bird? Let's take a minute to find it. It vanished. And it's flying, volando, flying out the window. All right, let's sing our song. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three, four. Where he goes. He goes out the window. El pájaro pintado vuela feliz sobre los campos. The painted bird flies happily over the fields. Look at all the things that he's flying over. Oh, allá tiene una flauta, una quena. You can see over there he has a flute, a quena. He's flying over animals. And do we have a painted bird on the page? We sure do. Let's go ahead and sing. Here we go. Vuela, vuela, vuela. Vuela el pájaro pintado. Vuela, vuela, vuela. Vuela el pájaro pintado. Let's follow him on his journey. Los campesinos están cosechando fresas. The people in the country are harvesting strawberries. And among other things on this page, you can see we have a flying bird. Here we go. Let's take part in that joy that he has. Fly, 
fly, fly, flying over the hills. Al pájaro pintado le provoca una. The painted bird is tempted by a strawberry. Para un pájaro, una fresa es suficiente. For a bird, one strawberry is enough. There you go, it's taking a tiny little bite. Oh, wait. Oh, I almost missed it. So we have a painted bird on this page? Yes. Is the painted bird flying? Not in this one. Almost thought I forgot a song. Después de comer, se lleva otra fresa en el pico. ¿La guardará para mañana? After eating, he takes another one in his beak. Will he save it for tomorrow? There he is with the strawberry. Oh, and he's flying. Think about what you think he might do with that strawberry. does with it. So he's flying that way. What will he do? He flies in the window, which means we sing. in his beak, and then we can see <gasps> Don Paolo is sleeping. He brings the strawberry nice and close, and ¿Quién me habrá traído esta fresa? Se pregunta Don Paolo. Who has brought me this strawberry? asked Don Paolo. Habrás sido tú. Was that you? He looks at the painted bird. Si algún día vas a visitarlo, verás que Don Paolo sigue pintando animales. If one day you choose to go visit him, you'll see that Don Paolo continues painting animals. See how many you can spot on the page. There's our pájaro pintado. Little frog. It's funny to imagine which of them have always been animals and which of them were painted first. That is the end of our story. Let's sing our song one last time, Pajaro Pintado, for our wonderful magical bird. for joining us in this book today. And I do have to brag a little bit on my students because they are so wonderful. This book right here was just a book that we really loved. It didn't have a song that went along with it. We just found a book that we really enjoyed, a story that we liked, that we could use our imaginations with. And we decided to make up a song and to make up games to go along with our book. When you add music in, it can kind of bring a story to life. So I encourage you, even if you don't have a music book at home, you can choose one of the many books that you have around and make up your own song. 
make up your own games to go along with it. And when you let our imaginations kind of flow, when we let our creativity come out, we can bring that story to life in a new way. Hold on a minute. ¿Quién me habrá traído esta fresa? Who brought me this strawberry? Habrá sido tú. Was it you? Or did our book bring it to life? I will see you next week for some more musical selections. Until then, have a wonderful musical creative week. <laughs>